Hey, what's up? I've been teaching the GMAT since 2008, and I've spent most of that time with Manhattan Prep. In fact, you might recognize my face from the Sentence Correction Strategy Guide. I shaved my beard to look younger. What do you think? In my career, I've worked with four different test prep companies, and they all focus on tips and tricks, textbook math, or some combination of those. Now, these approaches will get you to the right answer on practice questions, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're improving your reasoning. Let's look at a quick example to see what I mean. If we use textbook math to divide 147 by 3, you'd probably set up long division. And you would ask, does 3 go into 1? No. Does 3 go into 14? Yes, it does. It goes in 4 times. So write 4 there on top, multiply it back out, you get 12, and we bring 2 down. Right? That's how long division works. So now we brought the 2 down, we bring down the 7, and we ask, how many times does 3 go into 27? The answer is 9, you write 9 on top, and we have our answer, 49. Alright, what would that look like if we use reasoning instead? Well, we'd say, I don't know how many times 3 goes into 147, but I do know how many times it goes into 150. 150 is pretty close to 147, so I can tell you the answer will be just under 50. If we want to be more precise, we'll say 147 over 3 is the same as 150 minus 3 over 3. And you could simplify that further. You'd say 150 divided by 3 minus 3 divided by 3. Well, that's 50 minus 1 equals 49. So we got the same answer, of course, this time using reasoning. But how is the GMAT going to test whether we are using long division or reasoning? Well, there are a couple of ways the GMAT could do that. The first is they'll ask you to divide 207 by 23. If you try that with long division, let's see what happens. We'd ask, does 23 go into 2? No. Does 23 go into 20? No. Does 23 go into 207? Well, that was the question in the first place. So long division completely fails here. And you can imagine how much time you might spend on a question like this in the middle of the test. Is it any wonder that people run out of time? What would this look like with reasoning? We'd say, I don't know how many times 23 goes into 207, but I do know that 23 goes 10 times into 230. 230 is pretty close to 207, so let's go with that. All right, so we'll rewrite the question. Instead of 207 over 23, we'll say 230 minus what? Uh, minus 23 to get back to that 207. So we have 230 minus 23 in the numerator all divided by 23. Now we're going to simplify that. 230 over 23 minus 23 over 23. Well, that's 10 minus 1 equals 9. There's your answer. So that's one way the GMAT would test whether you're using reasoning. Another way they could do it is they could give you some algebra. They would ask you to simplify a minus b over b. Now, if you usually use long division, you might be stuck here. But if you normally use reasoning, you'd see that this is very similar to what we just did. Instead of 230 minus 23 over 23, we have a minus b over b. You'd simplify it as a over b minus b over b equals a over b minus 1. Is reasoning always going to win on the GMAT? Well, it's called quantitative reasoning for a reason. I started quant reasoning to set you free. Set you free of the timer. Set you free of mindless memorization. I know you're busy, so I keep my videos short and to the point. I will show you how to solve the toughest GMAT problems the way they were meant to be solved. Quickly, accurately, with minimal effort, and with a smile on your face. Subscribe to this channel and click that little bell below so you get notified every time I publish a new video. I aim to publish daily with the best kept GMAT secrets and the best solutions to official guide questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.